Hallo, hallo, Mic Test. Hello financial programmers, I am Ritwik Dashura and I am back with a new video and some new learnings. In this video, I will be talking about scipy.stats.norm functionality of this particular library. And in the, in the last videos, I talked about different libraries like NumPy, Pandas, Matplotlib and DateTime library. And all of them are very, very useful in the field of finance. And I have only talked about the most important aspects of this library because these libraries are huge. I don't want you to waste a lot of time learning the entire thing. That's why I have made this playlist for you guys to just under, understand the most important aspects of this library and in this video i will talk about the norm functionality of scipy.stats package as i mentioned in the last video for this playlist i am taking out some materials from this course which is python for financial programming which is specifically designed for people who want to learn python for finance from scratch and i have talked about multiple things that covers all different aspects of python programming in finance Watch this video till the end and I'll tell you the benefits of enrolling in this particular course. So uh, what is scipy.stats or the entire scipy library used for? Uh, basically it's used for statistical calculations um, for anything which requires things like say normal distribution or probability distribution function or cumulative distribution function. If you are finance students then you might know about value at risk which is var. Right, or CVAR, conditional value at risk, etc. Et so there are a lot of things for which we need to um, use this library, which is SciPy library. And SciPy.stats is basically for all statistical calculations. SciPy is a huge library which covers a lot of things, which includes um, machine learning as well. So yes, maybe like in future, I'll cover uh, more detailed things about the entire SciPy library. Right now, I'm just focused about SciPy.stats and inside that, I'm just focused on the normal distribution because in most of the cases, we'll be uh, talking about the normal distribution curve uh, and we need to understand how to do it in Python, right? So what I'm going to do here is I'll import from SciPy.stats import norm. Right. Let's also import numpy as np and matplotlib.pyplot as plt. Now, we will be using a function of numpy which is a range. Right. A range is basically uh, a, a function which makes an array, a numpy array, uh, which starts from one number and ends at another number and all the numbers between them are evenly, uh, evenly distributed. So in most of the cases, a range is used for making the x axis, right? So I'm creating x array is equal to np dot a range. It starts from minus five, ends at five and the difference between all the numbers is uh, 0.25. So for example, if I run this and if you see what is the output. So, so the output is uh, it starts from minus five. It ends at five. Basically, the last one, it's not just considering, but all the numbers are having a difference of 0.25, right? You will see it is 0.25 is getting incremented in all the numbers to make it 0.4.75 uh, in this case, so, right? So this is the x axis that I'm going to use. The y axis is basically norm dot PDF then x array which is basically the x axis and 0 comma 1 0 is basically the mean and 1 is basically the standard deviation so all the normal distribution uh, curves with uh, uh, the standard deviation of 1 and uh, average of 0 or mean of 0 are called as standard normal distribution right so i'm just making a standard normal distribution here i'm using norm dot pdf pdf is basically probability density function right then inside this i'm providing x array comma 0 comma 1 now let's see what is y array right the y array is uh, basically uh, there are different numbers so I, we need to plot it to understand it uh, better i'm going to use plt dot plot and then we'll just write x array comma y array you'll see the plot in front of you it's a normal distribution curve where x axis is x array y axis is y array so yeah you can see that uh, uh, the, the average of this normal distribution is zero and the standard deviation is one now there's another thing apart from normal distribution function there's another thing called cumulative distribution function which basically starts from zero and ends at one if you remember if you are a statistics uh, student there's something called sigmoid right which starts from zero and ends at one. It, it looks like uh, an S, right? It's exactly the same, right? It also starts at zero and cumulatively it adds different numbers and it ends at one. 
right let me just plot it uh, for a better understanding in this case i am going to use another function of np which is numpy library which is linspace right it's exactly the same which is uh, that is using uh, a range i'm using linspace in this case again the functionality is exactly the same so here it starts from minus 4 ends at 4 and i want 1000 different numbers between them so rather than providing this the incremental value i'm providing the number of items inside this particular uh, variable and y is equal to norm dot cdf cumulative distribution uh, distribution function and then inside parenthesis i it is x right let's plot this one which is x comma y you'll see a curve which looks like s which starts from zero and ends at one as i mentioned if you remember sigmoid is also something like this yeah so this is sigmoid guys who are into artificial intelligence uh, might know this thing that sigmoid is used extensively in ai and uh, machine learning models and this is the function of sigmoid and in this case we are doing something similar using cdf which is cumulative distribution function so yes guys that's it for this video i don't want to make this video uh, much more complicated for more detailed information i highly recommend you to uh, refer this particular course which is python for financial programming the link is in the description box just uh, click on the link which is fprithvik.com slash python and select one of these for indian rupee this one for other currencies this one and you'll see this page in front of you just scroll a bit down you'll see all different pointers for this course uh, uh, such as like five sessions 10 chapters 22 videos 10 quizzes three challenging assignments two live projects and one live session per month these are the two live projects and you can pause this video and read it uh, i would say in detail these are the different sessions in the inside the entire course syllabus right and the session three if you see i have talked about different libraries in very very detail things like numpy matplotlib pandas library date time and even like scipy.stats.norm and there are a lot of uh, quizzes available assignments available and these are the two different stock analysis and investment portfolio creation live projects which are also a part of this entire course with the final assignment so yeah this course is very extensive you will learn all different aspects of python program which is useful in the field of finance the best part of this course is that you will get all these five things which are 10 interactive quizzes three challenging assignments two live projects one live session per month certificate of completion at a very very discounted price we are running a discount campaign as of now which will be ending very soon so please check it out and use this code rtk40 to get benefited from this uh, discount campaign in the in the left hand side it's it's written certificate of completion you should put this certificate on linkedin also tag me and i'll comment on that particular post to provide some additional validation on the skill set that you have got in this course there are already more than 70 people who have enrolled in this course in last three days thank you so much for that amazing response so yes guys that's it for this playlist i'm looking forward to see you in the course and until then peace